Спасибо. Thank you so much. Thank you. Уважаемый господин председатель. Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen. Friends. I'm sincerely glad to welcome you here in Russia. For us, it's a great honor to host the Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, the oldest international parliamentary organization to host here in Russia, here at home. I'd like to say that today's forum is the most representative forum in the whole 128 years of history of the Union. Over 160 delegations, 96 speakers, 2,400 participants. The agenda is extensive as well. Ahead of you are discussions on such topical issues as human rights and freedoms, fighting terrorism, sustainable global development, role of women and youth in politics and economy. And I know that the work has almost already started. It is quite symbolical that this meeting is taking place in St. Petersburg. It was here in this city at the beginning of the last century when the first Russian parliament has started its work. It was called State Duma. Parliamentarian traditions and law-making practices and culture were taking shape. This legacy, these lessons of history are crucial for us today, as well as the expertise of our international colleagues in lawmaking and party building. Your experience, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. In today's Russia, the independence and high status, the key mandate of the parliament, are enshrined in the main law of the country, the constitution. In the next year, it will celebrate 25 years. At the same time, we'll consistently follow the path of the development of democratic and representative institutions of power, raising the authority and the significance of the legislative branch of government. Dear friends, across the globe, par parliaments are those who express the will of the nation, and they play the leading role in developing the national plans for development. Also a crucial role in finding solutions to common threats and challenges. They're common for all of us. And one of those, I believe, is the erosion of the international law and the very culture of interstate dialogue. Unfortunately, it is so. Unfortunately, that's the practice of today. You, like no other, other, know the value of law and, and legislation, the dialogue and discussion. That is the basic foundation for interparliamentary work. That is why, in current conditions, it is parliamentary, interparliamentary diplomacy that is in such high demand. It can build trust between countries and help find compromise in finding solutions for acute international and regional problems. Unfortunately, we see that quite recently there are even more attempts to limit direct contacts and discussions between parliamentarians. I mean the practice of introducing discriminatory limitations and sanction lists, where quite often we see the names of parliamentarians. We believe that such practice is unacceptable, it is detrimental and simply stupid and even more counterproductive when within interparliamentary structures whole delegations are being deprived. Unfortunately, that happens as well. We believe that this runs contrary to the principle of free interparliamentary cooperation, the sovereign right of every country to express and argue its position in an open and civilized manner. Today's world cannot have um, one-size-fits-all and rubber stamp models of development. Each country has its natural and inarguable right to define by itself its own destiny, as it is enshrined in the UN Charter. Efforts to interfere in the life of sovereign countries without knowledge, without consideration for um, local peculiarities, wreaks only havoc. 
such ill-conceived interference from outside has brought the destabilization to North Africa and Middle East. It has brought a um, growing terrorist threat and destabilized the region. I believe that fighting terrorism should be done without double standards, without hidden agendas, without using radicals to someone else's political goals, and of course, only by joining efforts, only together. Many a time, Russia has called upon the global community to create a wide coalition in fighting terrorism, and we still believe it is crucial in building real partnership in fighting terror. You know what kind of efforts our country makes in stabilizing military and political situation in Syria? Over the past two years, the territory controlled by terrorists has shrunk manifold. Some large settlements were liberated. A significant blow to the terrorist infrastructure has been dealt. I would like to highlight that we are acting in agreement with the authorities of the, Sir of, of the Syrian government and strictly in accordance with international law. Recently, the Astana format in Kazakhstan has put on paper the agreements on four de-escalation zones in Syria. They were reached together with guarantor countries Russia, Iran, and Turkey, and with the support of many other states. Such agreements create conditions to implement UN Security Council Resolution 2254 on the basis of direct dialogue between governments and opposition in joining their efforts to the end of elimination of the terrorist hotbed in instating peace and providing the unity of Syria. We believe that the global community should think about post-war rebuilding of the state. In what form, in what shape, and the assistance should be rendered, as well as to the other states in the region, how to facilitate their socioeconomic development, how to strengthen state institutions, including the legislative branch. You can agree that these tasks are worthy of discussion at the parliamentarian and interparliamentarian level. Dear colleagues, it is in our common interest to promote peaceful, constructive, and well-balanced agenda, to strive to bring down the level of conflict, not to allow to appear for the new divisive lines, including inter-ethnic and inter-religious lines. We should strive to provide, uh, to create more just and viable architecture in interstate relations. I believe that an overwhelming majority of parliamentarians in the world find such an approach close to theirs. I wish you all the best. I wish you every success to the IPU and its participants. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Hereby, I declare 170th session of the IPU open. <laughs>